All right, class, settle down, grab your notebook, grab your pencil, and don't forget your Bible because it is time for today's Bible Pop Quiz for this Wednesday, November the 1st, 2023. And well, you know what time it is, class. I mean, you made it to class on time, right? It's 1247 p.m. I know most classes don't start at 1247 p.m. So maybe I should have waited till 1 p.m. to start. But it's a pop quiz. You never know when class is starting. You never know when the pop quiz is happening. I know, I know, I know. I I told you that typically it would be Monday Wednesdays and Fridays. I mean, it is Wednesday, so that that kind of fits, right? Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But you also know, if you look in your notebook, that the last Bible pop quiz occurred on October, I believe, the 25th, 2023. October the 25th, 2023, meaning it's been a few days. And you probably were thinking, well, I wonder what's going on. I wonder, Or maybe you were like, hey, maybe he's forgotten about these pop quizzes because I'm not liking them. I don't know. I don't know what you're thinking. All I know is, hey, welcome to class and welcome to another Bible pop quiz. And hopefully this one will prove to be beneficial. Now, before we talk about the Bible pop quiz for today, let me remind you, the last one was all on Philippians chapter 3. Hopefully you did very good with Philippians chapter three. Hopefully you looked at it. We had some open-ended questions like, what does it mean to rejoice in the Lord? We had some fill in the blank questions like, beware of blank, beware of blank, blank, beware of the blank. We also had a question like three times in Philippians 3, 2, Paul tells us to beware are the are three different things or groups being listed or three descriptive ways of describing one group? Some of these were very much more open-ended questions. So when we do that, I typically don't go back and do a lot of review because I want you to do the work. Um, and then we had, uh, what does it mean to have no confidence in the flesh? That's Philippians 3, 3, I believe. What does it mean to have no confidence in the flesh? Hopefully you spent a lot of time working on that. You've had plenty of time to work on it. Some of you submitted your work. Some of you did not. Whether you submitted it, whether you did not submit it. I hope you participated In the quiz, you look things up. Hopefully it sparked conversations with family members, spouse, children, whoever, and that you all benefited from it. Now, today is going to be kind of an interesting, there's really two parts to this quiz. The first part deals with one specific verse. However, you may have to look throughout the Bible to try to come up with an answer. It's a very open-ended question or open-ended questions, I should say. There's a number of open-ended questions all dealing with one verse. So you're going to have to do a little bit of work trying to figure out how best to answer this. And I do know this, uh, that no one is going to answer it the same way. This is going to, this, this will definitely demonstrate the very different ways of thinking that people approach the text but I'm going to try to fix that. And you'll see here in a minute when I start asking these questions. Then the last two questions are open-ended questions. They don't deal with a specific verse. They deal with two specific days, today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow, depending on if you know your liturgical church calendar, if you know maybe early church history, you're probably familiar with what today and tomorrow is. If you're not super familiar, you're going to have the opportunity to do a little bit of research using your, you know, te- the, your technological tools, your phone, computer, tablet, to do something beneficial and useful. And that's doing a little bit of research to find out exactly what is today its significance. How, wh- where did it, what's the origins of it? And what is the significance of tomorrow and how is it connected to the past and what are the basic elements of of what will be remembered and celebrated today and tomorrow? So are you ready for all of that? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Have your notebook, your pencil, and your Bible because we begin the Bible Pop Quiz for today, November the 1st, 2023. I have my pencil. I have my notebook. 
And ladies and gentlemen, I have I have my Bible, if you can hear that, right? Trying to hold multiple things in your hand <laughs> for sound effects is not easy, okay? So, are you ready? Okay, let's begin this Bible pop quiz by actually opening your Bible and going to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Now, if you listen to the podcast all the time, you know we were just in Romans chapter 8 not too long ago, right? We did kind of a little a message dealing with Romans chapter 8. I thought it was beneficial. I also received a very, 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 very negative email where someone seemed to inform me, all you had to do was look in Romans 8 and you could have resolved the whole problem as if I didn't know Romans chapter 8 existed, which was a little frustrating considering I spent, I don't know, multiple years years teaching through the book of Romans. Oh, and well, we just did a devotional message on Romans. Okay, never mind. But we're back in Romans chapter eight. Are you ready? Romans chapter eight. Listen carefully to verse 13. Romans chapter eight, verse 13, because four questions is going to come from Romans chapter eight, verse 13. Four questions. You're going to have a total of six questions today for the Bible pop quiz for this November the 1st. 2023, this Wednesday, November the 1st, you're going to have six questions. All four, four of the questions come directly from this verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. We read these words. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. You shall die. You shall live. What's the difference between dying and living? Well, dying is if you live after the flesh. Living is if you, through the Spirit, mortify the deeds of the flesh or deeds of the body, then you shall live. There seems to be very conditional. There's a condition you have to meet in order to live. There's a condition if you, if you don't meet or if there's another condition will lead to death. This is, this has some serious theological ramifications. I don't want to start teaching it, even though I'm, I'm almost about to do so. But Romans 8, 13, that is the verse, all right? That is the verse. Here comes your four questions that flow directly from this. Here is question number one. One, again, this is the Bible Pop Quiz for Wednesday, November the 1st, 2023. Here we go. Question number one. What does it mean to live after the flesh? What does it mean to live after the flesh? Now, what I want you to do is ignore everything you've ever been taught. I don't care. I don't want you looking up a commentary. I don't want you to look in your study Bible. I don't want you to look to your pastor, to any Bible teacher. I want you on your own using just your Bible to come up with the best answer you can come up with of what does it mean to live after the flesh? Are there other cross references that you think are relevant and helping you define exactly what it is? And I need you to define it specifically. I want you to give me a specific definition of what it means to live after the flesh. I want you to list your cross-references that clearly seem to demonstrate what it means to live after the flesh. But you need to specifically define it. Because Romans 8.13 tells me, let me read it again, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. So we, if I'm going to die, if I live after the flesh, then it is imperative that I know exactly what it is. And I can't play this game. Well, to live after the flesh is this. I mean, well, I mean, not completely. Like I can't make 15 different possible exceptions. I got to know exactly what it is. So question number one today, what does it mean to live after the flesh? Question number two. Two. I think you probably know what question number two is, because all of them, these four questions I'm about to give you all come from Romans 8, 13. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. I think we may end up with, I may want to add another question here, but I, I, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm going to stay with what I have. There's, there's probably, there's an obvious one here I should have added, but that's okay. Number two. What does it mean to live through the Spirit? Now, I'm going to offer some different ways of phrasing this. So what does it mean to live through the Spirit, after the Spirit, or by the Spirit? 
What does it mean to live through the Spirit, after the Spirit, or by the Spirit? What does it mean? Because it says, Romans 8, 13, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So this is the idea. You either live after the flesh or in a sense you're living through the Spirit in order to accomplish something. We could ask what you have to accomplish, but what does it really mean to live after, to live through, after, or by the Spirit? What does it mean to live through the Spirit? Okay, I want you to, I want you to, I, 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 yeah, I want you to just, what does, what does it mean to live through the, through the, or after, or by the Spirit? I'm going to put all those different ways of phrasing it, because I'm going to try to, try to help you get a basic idea. Obviously, there's a contrast here, right? What does it mean to live after the flesh? What does it mean to basically live through the Spirit, by the Spirit, after the Spirit? Now, obviously, living by, after seems to be connected to mortifying the deeds of the body, so we could we could add that, but we won't do that right now. We won't do that right now. It just seems to be that it's offering a contrast between two ways of living. After the flesh or through the spirit, um, through the spirit, after the spirit, or by the spirit. And I'm utilizing those other that uh, those other phrases because you may be it may help you in cross-referencing. So number one, what does it mean to live after the flesh? Number two, what does it mean to live through the or after or by the spirit? Number three, I think you know what number three is. Well, you may not, because obviously I I, I should have done something with the mortify question. I should have, but I'm just going to skip it. All right. Number three. All right. Are you ready? I'm going to read Romans 8, 13 again. For if you live after the spirit, you shall die. So what does it mean? If we live after the flesh, we shall die. What does it mean that we will die? What does it mean we will die? What does it mean? If I live after the flesh, we shall die. What does that mean? I'm going to die. If I live after the flesh, I'm going to die. Am I going to die physically? Is that, is that eternal death? Does that mean I'm going to hell? I need to know. I need to know exactly what it means to live after the flesh. And I need to know exactly what it means that I, I could die. Because that's a very, 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 very specific, <laughs> serious consequence. Right? So what does it mean that if we live after the flesh, we shall die? And I think you know what number 14 is, Romans 8, 13. For if you live after this flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. What does it mean if we live through the spirit, we, sh- we will live? What does it mean that we will live? What is, the, what is it saying between death and living, dying and living? What, what, is the diff- what is the understanding is what does it mean to live? What does it mean that we shall live? Is this heaven? Is this eternal life? What does it mean? Now you can you can look up any scripture as cross references. Just no commentaries, no study Bibles, no sermons. Just see what we can find by scripture alone. So let's go through this again for your Bible pop quiz for Wednesday, November the first, twenty twenty three. What does it mean to live after the flesh? Number two. What does it mean to live through the through the or after or by the Spirit? Number three, what does it mean if we live after the flesh, we shall die? And number four, what does it mean if we live through the spirit, we shall live? Now we could add a fifth question there on, on mortify, but we won't, we won't do that right now. We won't do that right now. Maybe we'll have to circle back to it for the next Bible pop quiz. All right. Those are your four questions. Number one, what does it mean to live after the flesh? Number two, what does it mean to live through the or after or by the spirit? Number three, what does it mean if we live after the flesh, we shall die? Number four, what does it mean that if we live through the spirit, we shall live? And then number five. Now, those four questions all deal with Romans 8, 13. The next two questions deal with your calendar today. If you look at your calendar, and if your calendar notes certain liturgical celebrations, there's some calendars you can buy that all they have are liturgical celebrations, days celebrated by different, uh, you know, Christian traditions and Christian liturgical uh, calendars, depending on the denomination, whether Lutheran or Greek Orthodox or or Episcopalian or Catholic, right? So if you look on some calendars, you'll see that today is All Saints Day. So your job today is simple. What is All Saints Day? When I say what it is, I want you to look up the history, 
the origin, the basic idea behind it, what is celebrated. I want you to know. Now, here's your, here's your job. I want you to look at two non-Catholic sources that describes what All Saints Day is, and I want you to look at two Catholic sources. Make sure there are, you know, an actual Catholic site, and I want you to look two non-Catholic sites and two Catholic sites, and I want you to summarize the, the history, origin, and basic idea of what is celebrated in church in Catholic churches all across the United States of America today on this November the 1st, All Saints Day. All Saints Day. Now, uh, also, look up, uh, while you're figuring out what All Saints Day is, add to that, what are the scripture readings for All Saints Day? What is the scripture readings for All Saints Day? Add that to it. So what is All Saints Day? The history, the origin, the basic concept, and what are the scripture readings for today? I can tell you you're going to be in the Gospel of Matthew, and I can tell you you're going to be in the book of Revelation. I won't tell you all of them. And don't forget the psalm. So you're going to have your first reading, the psalm, and then you're going to have a a gospel reading. And you may have actually a separate, you may have an epistle reading. Since it's a solemnity, today is a solemnity, you'll probably get, you'll probably get a first reading, a psalm, an epistle, and then you'll get a gospel. That's what I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. You can take a look. What is All Saints Day? Got that? Number six. What is All Souls Day? What is All Souls Day? All Souls Day. Because that is tomorrow. If you look on a calendar, All Souls Day. It's typically rare in liturgical celebrations that you have two major kind of celebrations back to back. Right. But in this particular case, at least in the Roman Catholic tradition, now All Saints Day goes beyond just the Catholic. Okay. So just so that you know that All Souls, in fact, All Saints Day and All Souls Day, well, you could go back to maybe to a time that All Martyrs Day, but that's a whole, we could get into a whole historical discussion. I'm not trying to give you too many answers, but what is All Saints Day and what is All Souls Day? Just, I need you to just give me the basic idea. And also with All Souls Day, what is the scripture reading for All Souls Day? All Saints Day and All Souls Day. You can look to the Catholic lectionary to find those out. Now, and the reason you should know what these days are and you should know the scripture readings is because if you know Catholics, now you can sit there and just yell and scream at them or you can take a different approach and go, oh, today is All Saints Day. So what did you think about the first reading? What did you think about the second reading? How do you understand? And you can just start talking the scriptures with them using what they heard in mass. Typically people just like, you pagans, you heretics, burn in hell. Other than saying, hey, finding a way to have an an actual profitable conversation. Did you go to mass today for All Saints Day? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. How was it? Oh, so so what what was the homily about? Okay. Well, hey, I, I, I do know the scripture readings for today. So you got a few minutes. You want to talk about those? Yeah, sure. Okay. So what did you think about the, I'm not going to tell you where it is. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what they are. What did you think about this one? And then you just get into an interesting conversation about scripture. Hopefully that will, that approach less, t- t- you know, they, they, they're not so defensive. You're not coming after them. But guess what you're getting to do? You're engaging in a conversation about the scriptures. And you can just ask questions that lead them to consider the scriptures more carefully. And sometimes that's a great way to, to actually have a productive conversation instead of just yelling, screaming argument and calling people names. And then the same thing tomorrow. Hey, did you go to Mass for All Souls Day? Yes, I did. So how was the homily? So what did you think about the first reading? What did you think about the second reading? What did you think about the third reading? And it's amazing how that can lead to an actual productive conversation where both of you are discussing God's word. 
Those are your six questions today. I know there should have been a seventh. I know we should have talk, talked about mortifying the deeds of the body. I know that. I apologize, but I don't want to add it. So here we go. Your Bible pop quiz for this November the 1st, 2023. This Wednesday, November the 1st, 2023. First four, four questions come from Romans 8, 13. Number one, what does it mean to live after the flesh? Number two, what does it mean to live through or after or by the Spirit? Number three, what does it mean if we live after the flesh, we shall die? Number four, what does it mean if we live through the Spirit, we shall live? Number five, what is All Saints Day? Number six, what is All Souls Day? Both for All Saints Day and All All Souls Day. Four sources, two non-Catholic, two Catholic. At least read them and then summarize and include what are the scripture readings for All Saints Day and All Souls Day. And that concludes your Bible pop quiz for November the 1st, 2023. May you put forth some effort. Maybe you benefit great. Hopefully, may you benefit greatly. Not maybe, may you benefit greatly from it. And most importantly, may God bless you as you study a little history. And more importantly, as you look and try to understand Romans chapter 8. Verse 13, if you have any questions, any struggles, any difficulties, contact me, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com, and I truly mean it. May God bless you as you open and study his word and you look into the history of things that have been important in certain elements and aspects of Christianity. May God bless you. Thank you for participating, and I look forward to hearing from you. 